Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a new titanium wood stove coming from Pomali known as the T-Brick Ultra. So let's get right into it. Okay, so to get things started, it is a wet and rainy day out today, so hopefully we can get through this. Uh, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a tabletop display, opening up the bag, laying out the components, and showing you guys what comes with the stove. So first off, the very nice bag. This is a carry bag, two handles. It is not the paper bag like uh, the traditional bags that Pomali used to have. This is actually a very, very durable ripstop fabric, and it has padding inside of the fabric. So it will protect the stove and help you carry the stove, and it is very abrasive resistant to scratches on the ground and whatnot. It does have one very long U-shaped track zipper opening up to the stove. So I'm going to lay some of these components out. Now, this is a pre-burned pipe. This does not come with the stove. This is my personal pipe, and that's what we're going to be using today to burn the wood stove. However, it does, of course, come with a titanium roll-up pipe. So we've got the pipe there. We've got the spark arrester, and I've already pre-attached the guy out holder. So we do have a titanium spark arrester. We then have the damper system right here. We've got a pair of cut gloves, which are going to be very useful for rolling the pipe for the very first time. And the rings are on there as well. It's all wrapped in plastic nicely. We then have a little bag with an extra screw, a wrench, and a hex key. So this is to help loosen or tighten some of the components during shipping. Sometimes things loosen up. Uh, if you do need to adjust, you can do that very easily. And then we have the entire stove, sides, body, everything bound in here with two Velcro straps. So I'm going to get the bag out of the way and we're going to go through some of the components, open up the straps here and kind of get everything set up before it rains too hard today. So hopefully we can make it through this. All right, so getting rearranged here, move some of the stuff off to the side. We will open up these two Velcro straps. These, I really do enjoy these a lot with all the stoves. It helps keep everything nice and tight together so it's not banging and clanging. They are branded with tamale on them. So very nice little touch there. Very helpful. You can use these with other pieces of gear, maybe tents or tarps, if you're not using them for the stove. So these are an added value. I'm just gonna pop it down here into the carry bag and we can have a look at the actual stove. So right away, you guys can clearly see why they call it the Ultra. This thing is gigantic. And I am gonna be doing an updated video with a whole bunch of stoves on the tabletop side by side so you guys can see the comparison and sizes. I'm gonna be talking about pros and cons. Stay tuned for that video. Today we're gonna to be focusing on the Ultra. So here we have the top, we've got the three screws for the damper piece, we've got the Pomali logo. Underneath we have that very nice finned top. This helps add a lot of rigidity to it. We're going to talk more about this a little later on in the video. We also have a knurled nut up here, which I want to touch on in a little bit as well. Looking at the stove body, it is a fast fold design. It is all titanium, one millimeter thick of, uh, of thickness for the material. The front and the back swing up just like that. We do have an added damper piece, which you can use or not use. It's totally up to you. That does go inside of the lid. Like I said, we'll touch on that in just a moment. There is the stove body in its essence. Now, mine did come with a solid panel. So this is a solid titanium double wall, as it does have the breather holes up top. This is the inside and this would be the outside and it has the vents. So there's no way for embers to pop outside of the wall and land on the ground, but this does introduce a ton of oxygen into the stove, which creates a reburning effect up in the top of the stove. So that is a solid panel, double wall titanium. And then I've opted to have a glass panel, which is very, uh, very similar to all the other Pomali stoves, just the glass in there, titanium as well with the frame. And then we've got the stove body. The legs are underneath. They do fold out just like the other titanium stoves from Pomali. And the door, very large opening door. Now, it's really funny because this door opening can basically fit a T1 Mini through it on a diagonal. That's how big this stove is. So I'm, I'm really excited to do the comparison video. But like I said, for today, we're gonna focus on the, the Ultra. Now, how you assemble this stove is very simple. Let's put the Let's put the solid panel on this side closest to me. So there are these locking tabs up here and there's basically a track. We want to swing these tabs all the way up and rotate it. So insides on the inside 
and simply slide it down this track. You do have to line it up a little bit. And uh, once you get it lined up, it goes fairly smoothly. Try to get that lined up there. I can barely even see what I'm doing here. Okay, there we go. All right, so get that lined up and then there are those two fins. So you guys can see how this is not perfectly set. Give it a firm press, it drops in. This side will be a little bit easier for you guys to see. Uh, where I am in a rush for the rain. I do want to get this filmed today and I'm itching to burn the stove in as well. So we get it dropped in like that and then the final little adjustment, just a simple press, totally flat and level all the way around. I'm going to leave this out for today's purpose but I'll show you guys right now what it is for and where it goes. So turning the lid upside down, we have this vented pattern. This screw right here. If we loosen this off, and I typically do not use these with my stoves. I don't have a problem with them functioning without it, but those who want a little bit of a baffled wall, that's exactly what this is. It's a little baffle. It does work really well. So it just goes in there like that. You place the screw in and you guys can see there's about a two inch gap from the inside of where the damper piece would go. And obviously it blocks a lot of sparks and helps retain a lot, retain a lot of heat. Um, but I really, I don't find that I need to use it because these stoves burn extremely hot and they're easy to control the heat with the damper and the draft setting. So I typically leave these out, but they are a really nice added benefit. And uh, depending on what setup you have, it does help break up a little bit of sparks. So if you're going to be burning a lot of softwood, I do recommend using this. I typically burn a lot of oak and maple, so I try and stay away from it. Assembling the top lid is very simple. I'll try and pull the whole stove closer to me. So we're just gonna set it on top. And this is probably one of the easiest styles of stoves to assemble. Drop it and simply swing these little gates up, just like that. Locking the top lid on, very secure, all four corners. Uh, just works really, really well. Now there are holes drilled in the sides of this. And here comes that rain, guys. There are holes drilled in the tops of these tabs. Now currently, the Ultra does not have a side table option. But with the T-Brick, these holes are part of a side table, which extends out and then legs down. So you have a, a rack that may be coming. I don't want to let out too many secrets right now for Pamali. I'll leave that up to them to discuss. But there we have the assembled stove body. Now what I like to do is turn the whole stove upside down and deploy the legs, which are fast fold legs. Very simple. And while we're under here, I might as well show you guys the underside. There is that vented pattern again to help a little bit of cooling and a ton of rigidity for these stoves, which helps reduce a lot of the deformation in the titanium. We're gonna find out today how much deformation actually happens in this particular stove because obviously I have not burned in it yet, but this is a gigantic stove. So let me get some things cleaned up here and I'm gonna cover the specs on the stove and then we're gonna get a fire going in this ASAP. All right, so I got a little bit cleaned up. Let me run through the specs really quickly on the stove. I have the Pamali listing pulled up on their website right now. So I'm just gonna read off what they have on their website. So the carrying weight of this stove is 8.8 .8 pounds. That includes everything needed to operate the stove, which is four kilograms. The folded dimensions are 18.5 by 8.66 by 3.94 inches. And there's a diagram I'll throw up on the screen so you guys can follow along with me. The stove body dimensions are 17.72 by 8.66 by 8.66 inches. Assembled dimensions are 21.85 by 8.66 by 14.17 inches. The side glass is 14.17, 5.12 inches. So that's the glass right here. There goes the chimney pipe. So that's the side glass right there. It's a very large viewing window, I will say that. Very large and I'm excited to see how it stays clean or if it's gonna dirty up when we burn. So hopefully that helps you guys. Spark arrestor is included. The glass warranty is a two year <laughs> warranty on the glass. It is tempered. It's very, very difficult to break. I've dropped many of these stoves and luckily, knock on wood, I have not broken glass yet. Um, and I think that's about it for the specs that I will cover for today. There are a load of specs on this. That's why I'm kind of rushing through it because it is going to rain and you guys can find all of this on pamali.com, which makes it very, very helpful. So I'm going to assemble the uh, damper portion. So you see the hole up top. I already have the three screws pulled out. They're already in my hand, titanium screws. 
This damper piece just drops right on top and then you simply add the screws. Incredibly simple, no tools needed. This is the same on all Pamali stoves right now, current production in 2021. The old versions used to have two screws and they used to drop in and then rotate about 90 degrees. These just simply drop in and screw in. They're super simple and super strong. Got that on there. I'm gonna get the pipe rolled out, get that assembled, get some wood in here and light the stove on fire. All right, so we got a fire going inside of the stove and what do you know, here comes the rain. But we're gonna push on and keep going because that's what we do on Low Wolf 902. So the wood that is inside of here is a mix between softwood and hardwood. It is very dry despite it raining out. The, the wood up here is sheltered underneath of a tree. So for the most part, that should stay dry. Uh, it seems like it's burning really well right now. So I've got the damper all the way open. I've got the draft all the way open. And it being a mix of softwood and hardwood, it's gonna take a little bit longer for it to catch flame, much like it would with softwood, it would just take right off. This is gonna take a second longer, so it is putting out some heat though. The water on top just sizzling away as it hits. The sidewall's got some nice heat, I can feel the heat coming out the bottom. So we're gonna let this burn wide open for probably a good 15, 20 minutes. And I'm gonna to try to extend the fire all the way from the back to the front and get the stove really hot all the way through because it is a very long stove. All right, so the stove is burning incredibly well. And while this is burning nice and smooth, I am going to damp it down just a tiny bit. And we'll talk about the top surface. So this surface being as deep as it is, you can fit multiple pans, multiple pots up top for a lot of cooking. And the benefit of it being such a long wood stove is you guys will notice the pieces of wood that I have cut here. This is for a T1 Mini and a Timberwolf. You guys can kind of get the idea there. So you can fit some really long pieces of wood and some really big hunks of firewood inside of the stove for a large tent, maybe even a hammock hot tent, and go out hunting, go out fishing, whatever you're doing, maybe even homesteading. You can fit some really long pieces of wood inside of the stove and let it burn for a very long time, giving you a good night's sleep at night. So you don't have to wake up every couple hours loading these little guys. This stove will handle very large pieces of wood. Now, like I said, the damper in the rear is still wide open. The front draft is closed down to about 50% right now. And the amount of heat that is coming out of there, it is very, very hot. So it's actually uncomfortably hot to hold my hand in front of it. The side is very, very hot too. This glass will transmit a lot of heat more so than the metal sides will. So if you're looking for a lot of side heat, put that window facing the area where you want the heat to transfer from because on the non-window side, I can hold my hand like a centimeter away from the metal where it is double wall, there is no heat. There is heat, but it's not hot. But I cannot get, even that right there is hot. So the glass will let a lot more heat out than the metal will. Okay, so now that we've got a lot of fire inside of there, you guys can see it starting to creep its way back. We're getting some nice coloring up top of the stove. And you guys could just look at the size of this window. Like for real, let me stand on this side. Look at the size of that window. I'm gonna definitely have to do a side-by-side -side comparison of these stoves because I don't think it does justice looking at the stove by itself. If I had another stove out here, you guys would really see the difference. This is a gigantic stove. So that side window is going to be absolutely awesome in the winter time, letting out a lot of heat and a lot of light. So coming in close at the front door, these vents here for the draft portion of the stove, these are about 25% larger than the T-Brick Max and the T-Brick style stove. So these are enlarged, letting in a lot more air. Opening the door, you guys can see the massive opening that is there for you to load firewood in very easily and super easy to clean out as well. And a very generous window in the front to observe from the front. All right guys, so the stove has burned for well over one hour 
and it's going through the cooling down phase right now. I just dumped the fire out off camera into an outdoor fire pit. So I'm going to put my leather gloves on and take the stove apart. But before I do so, I'll give you guys kind of a, a spin around look so you can see a good look at it. It's very difficult to see inside, most likely on camera, but the, the entire inside is blue and purple on the bottom and way in the back. So that did change color. I'm not seeing any deformation anywhere in the stove. Give you guys a look at the side. So the door operates totally fine, no problem there. The draft functions perfectly. The damper, no problem there. Everything functions perfectly as it should. Um, let's get the top off. So take the top of the stove off. Swing those all out of the way. That is very, very hot still. It is not raining anymore. It's just the raindrops falling out of the tree. So we're winning in that sense. Uh, let's get the side off. Side panel comes off totally fine. It is very, very hot though. I can feel that coming through the glove. Pull the other side off. I can kind of open that. So that panel came off, no problem. Uh, one thing though, I did notice the entire inside of that, if that picks up on camera, the inside of the wall did turn blue and purple. So that's very nice, but the outside is still regular titanium. So that shows you how much heat does not transfer through the double wall, but the glass side gets very, very hot. So for all you stainless steel stove lovers out there, I feel the T-Brick series of wood stoves would really speak to you guys a lot. And uh, the reason why I say that is because the, the titanium in the stove, the whole construction of the stove is still one millimeter thick like most Pomali stoves. But you guys can see that the entire fin underside of this lid is blue and purple. And the top is barely even bronzed. So the top does get very hot enough to cook. But you guys can clearly see right there, purple and blue. And then again on this side wall, just regular titanium color. But flipping it over, we get the purples and the blues. And I hope that shows up on camera. So that shows you that the titanium being one millimeter thick, but being double walled, and reinforced with this double plating all over the stove, underneath the stove, the back wall, the top of the lid, that adds a lot more titanium, which really soaks in all of that heat. It takes a little bit longer to cool down, not much longer, but it does take longer just like stainless steel. And it also absorbs a lot more heat because there's more material there to do so. So I think this would be a really great option, the T-Brick series to help uh, stainless steel stove lovers out there that really like the stainless uh, and I do apologize for the smoke drifting in front of the camera there is fire off camera so uh, let's try folding these so barely don't even have to really touch that wow so that's incredibly easy to fold incredibly easy to fold guys I'm not seeing any deformation anywheres on anything the legs of course there's no heat transfer to those so those fold very easily I gotta say the stove performed really, really well. Now with the lack of color on the outside of the stove, without kind of reiterating what I already said, um, I do believe this stove is gonna take probably a good, maybe even eight to 10 hours of burning to really change color. Now I do have a little bit of a bonus, so if you guys are still watching, stay watching because I do have a little bit of a bonus. I did not, um, I couldn't wait to show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison. So I do have another wood stove out here with me. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, but all these controls, everything works just as it should. So all in all the stove, I'm very, very impressed with it. Now I'm going to assemble half of the stove. I'm gonna leave one side wall off and I wanna bring the other stove in just to show you how big this stove is in comparison. All right, so this is a little sneak peek for those of you who are still watching. This is going to be basically my comparison. I'm going to line up all of the Pomali stoves that I have and show you guys a comparison between sizes. Now, what I've got here today is obviously the T-Brick Ultra, and then I've got the T1 Mini. So look at the size comparison with these two stoves. Now, this is where things get really interesting. I want to change the camera angle to the side and then you guys will really be able to see the difference. And I've even left the side panel off on this side of the stove. And we can actually fit the stove inside of the Ultra. So let me move the camera around just to show you guys. But before I do so, we'll open up the front door. You guys can get a good look there. And we'll open up the front door to the T1 Mini. And that should help you guys kind of understand the difference of, uh, of wood capacity 
and how much you can really get in these stoves. So let's move the camera around to the side and show you guys the side angle because this is funny. All right, so now that we're on the side angle, again, T1 Mini, T-Brick Ultra. Look at the size comparison. Without me moving anything, just look at the size comparison of this. Let me move this kind of centrally located. You guys can really get a, a, an idea of the size here, but watch this. Let's fold these legs in. The stove fits inside of the stove and it goes back even farther. So that should pretty much tell you how big this stove is and just how much wood you can get in it. And the T1 Mini 3 will actually heat my hammock hot tent and the Hussar Plus tent. Those are very large shelters. This T1 Mini will heat those. This big guy is going to do much more. So that is hilarious that that fits inside of the Ultra. All right, guys. Well, I've got my T1 Mini inside of the T-Brick Ultra. Uh, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. The rain is back, so I think I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, this was a nice first look at the T-Brick Ultra. It is a beautifully large stove. It's going to really make things possible uh, that are not possible with a smaller stove, like leaving camp for longer periods of time, loading it up full of wood. This large glass window on the side, this thing is absolutely incredible now it is a little dirty right now because you know it's big it didn't really burn the cleanest as it should but that stuff literally wipes right off so once you burn it for a good three or four hours the window will self clean itself at a really nice hot burn but the amount of heat transmission that comes out of this because it's such a large glass window is insane okay so this glass window puts out a lot of heat when i'm sitting close to it i actually have to move back this glass window is more than the size of that entire stove. So this guy is going to throw a lot of side heat and uh, I'm really excited for winter to use it. So if you guys liked the video, let me know down in the comment section and also let me know what you guys think about the new T-Brick Ultra and how funny is that? The T1 Mini fits inside of it. So peace out guys and I'll see you in the next video.